Now, I always start my presentations like that, and it's very obnoxious, I know. But at the end of the day, people don't want to know about their waste. They don't want to know about sewage. They don't want to know about wastewater, when it actually costs them money at the end of the day. What we're about here with our tariffs is trying to save people money and drive them in the right direction to save money. And I'll go th through some of that in a minute. There's also some pretty scary stuff coming too on tariffs. Just for your information, that's um, our setup. I'm the manager here, Pollution Environment Branch, and we have a mobile effluent, man uh, mobile effluent management division. And if you follow my indicator here, there's a guy called Lunger in Warble over there who's got that off the ground for us. We've got uh, three source control areas which will be doing most of your tariffing. There's an account section which pulls up 110 million rand and trade effluent charges per annum out of about 30 million litres of trade effluent per day. Um, we have a project section or division and this you don't really want to know about, but that's a, a, something else we got pulled into. Okay, just for your information, as you've seen this many times, this is very old. Um, this actually shows you the sustainable yield of the Umgeni system here. This is the Spring Grove Dam which came into play and is saving our bacon right now. If we didn't have that, we'd be in big trouble right now. This line here is the projected water demand without any water saving uh, measures or uh, water demand management measures in the city. And this is with them. So you can actually see that we're in sort of this area here and we're about to move into bad territory. Well, actually, we're sort of around here. This, you've heard Mike talk about proposals for other dams. Um, that's going to raise the water tariff without a doubt going forward. Somebody's got to pay for it somewhere. In, in the past, historically, uh, the taxpayer used to cross-subsidize water, and that's why water was comparatively cheap in the old system. So we're going to be looking for other uh, water resources. Waste water recycling is one of those. Um, and if we have this scenario where people are discharging acid effluents to the sewer, you're going to be contaminating the groundwater, destroying the infrastructure which needs replacing. So this company here doesn't just have to pay for tariffs, it's also got to pay for the rehabilitation of the groundwater and the replacement of the pipeline. So when you think about tariffs, think about the other associated costs. This is also the sort of thing we're trying to sort out as well. In fact, that one is sorted out. That was the Stokes break many years ago. Okay, so we have to enforce the sewage disposal bylaws, which contains our trade effluent tariff equation. Um, that tariff equation gives us certain limits for discharge to sewer, and it's not as simple as all of that. We have different uh, standards for different lines. If you have a look at the Southern Wastewater Treatment Works, for instance, we have the Jacobs line here, which comes through, and that goes straight through to the sea outfall with a bit of degritting and uh, screening. Um, so the tariffs and the standards are geared around that, going through to the sea outfall. So they're very, very cheap as a result of it, and we cross-subsidize the rest of the city as a result of that. Having said that now, there's an awful lot of sludge which is going out from, through that pipeline. So we're actually going to be catching that sludge, digesting it in, in line with the United Nations Global Action Plan, and producing methane. And no, not incinerating our sludge. We don't favor that. We want to try and market our sludge. Currently, we're sending sludge to sugarcane farmers, subsidizing the, the costs of transport. It's a bit like a drug pusher, really, I guess. You, you, you give them cheap, cheap drugs, and then you push the price up later when they become dependent. So then, if you have a look at this line here, this is now the Chatsworth line, which feeds the Veolia wastewater recycling plant, uh, which brings water to, to uh, the Mondi system, uh, and quite cheaply, too. Ha but having said that, with this line here, and we've learned from this line that you mustn't mix industrial effluent with domestic wastewater if you're going to recycle it. It causes all sorts of problems. Worldwide, we have those problems. Uh, worldwide, they actually segregate it. If you look at Vintook, where they recycle wastewater, they segregate 
domestic from industrial. If you look at Singapore, it's a similar situation there. It causes problems. And we found here the entire flow coming down, which was about 40 megs a day, 40 million liters a day, only one and a half percent of that was industrial, and that gave us problems. So Valerie was talking about the issue of having very small volumes of industrial effluent, but they can cause much bigger problems in, in the end. We solve, we've solved the problem here in that we've got the, one of the offending companies to take that effluent out of the sewer and to tanker it, which is not a sustainable solution. Um, we found other methods of treating it, and they will be implementing that shortly. So at 0.75% uh, industrial wastewater, we are attaining the, the standards sustainably. If you look at the Kwa Marshu se section, people were talking about Kwa Marshu uh, recycling their wastewater for the Nubia area, possibly, if we can get it through politically. They've probably got 15% trade effluent. So you can see the constraints are coming through. You're going to have to spend more and more on cleaning up your waste because we need that water. And if we're going to have security in the area, you've got to uh, go for that. Okay, um, as far as the charges are concerned, we have a basic charge for the wastewater. And um, this is just purely to pay for my salary, thank you very much. Um, and also uh, to make sure you, there is an inspection force to come in there to monitor your effluent, um, to determine what the tariff should be. The, the more you discharge, obviously the more you are charged. And the stronger the effluent, the more that's dissolved in there, the more that's suspended in there, the more you, you pay. So this is just a, a monitoring charge based on the size of the industry. You can't do much about that. This bit you can do quite a bit about. This is our trade effluent charge where we're looking at uh, the cost in cents per kiloliter. So if you look at, we have a, a flat rate first called X, which is determining the conveyance charge. We have 7,500 kilometers of sewers in the city. You can go to Cape Town and back again many times. That's main trunk sewers. We have quite a few more. Another probably, you could double that quite easily of, of smaller sewers as well. We have 280 pump stations and 27 wastewater treatment works. But basically this is to convey, screen, and degrit your, your sewage. So we have a flat rate of about 7 rand 90. Now that's if you've got a weak effluent. If you've got a strong industrial effluent, then the COD, does everybody know what COD is? It's chemical oxygen demand. It's not cash on delivery. <laughs> but we think of it as cash on delivery. You deliver it, we charge you cash. All right. So this is um, 360 milligrams of oxygen per litre. Sorry for those of you who are not technical. But basically, if you go above that, you're going to, get, you're going to pay a heck of a lot more. And the same with the settleable solids. Settleable solids, if you can imagine a rain gauge, you put your effluent in there and settle it for half an hour, and you measure how many millilitres of sludge is in there. So that's millilitres, of, millilitres per litre. OK, and then we fiddle around with these tariffs here to make sure that we get cost recovery. We're not trying to make a profit. We're not trying to make a surplus here. We're just simply looking at cost recovery. So the more you put down there, the worse it gets. Now, the interesting bit. We are now investigating putting in a tariff where it insists that you comply with all of our standards. There are many industries that do not comply with our standards. So we're going to phase in a penalty tariff over a number of years. And this is the first time we're saying we're going to do it. We just put it in our little strategy plan. And this is part and parcel of the strategy. But basically, we're going to put, look at doubling and maybe even tripling. We'll just have to see how the, the, the effect takes over a number of years the tariff. If you comply with everything, with all of our discharge requirements, you'll get that back. If you do not comply, We'll keep that, thank you very much. And in addition to that, we'll look at the worst water quality variable, which is not complying. So if you ha say you've been putting a lot of um, copper down the sewer and you're way over the standard. So if you put it in two or three times the standard, which is easy to do, we're going to raise your tariff again another two or three times. So that's six times what you would pay. Okay. And we have to do this because you can see the necessity for the sustainability of the city. 
Uh, this is just somebody sampling. Um, don't think that um, you can just discharge during the day because we get pitching up at day, during the day. We also have these little devices tucked away, uh, which we put down just below the, sewer, the, the discharge points. 24-hour sampling, we're going to be getting a few exercises like that. We do suffer from a bit of crime and corruption in the organization. The, one of the purchasers um, who purchased one of these um, had a friend in the system, and the thing broke down on the very first day. But we have other samplers here which do work, and they're 15 years old and going strong. OK, then on top of that, so, that, so that's the basic charge for discharging into the sewer. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. But something else is happening on top of that, and it's Mike's fault. Uh, it's, I think he touched on it, and it's a waste discharge charge. If you have a look here, um, this is eutrophication. This is one effect of the downstream um, costs of somebody discharging. They were talking about externalities earlier on. There's an externality. Um, in the Ananda Dam, we have that problem not so serious, but it's moving in that direction. As a result, Mgeni Water has this wonderful ozone system, which is hugely expensive instead of using chlorine, because if you disinfect that water with chlorine, it smells like pesticide coming through your taps. So they, they use ozone and activated carbon. OK. So I seem to have jumped a slide here. So this is the waste discharge charge, or the concept behind it. The idea is now to internalize those externalities we were talking about. Water Affairs is going to be doing that to us at uh, the municipality. And as a result, they will assess, they will classify the river and say what the river needs to be, what management class they need to. So what is the existing class? Where are we going? And they'll come up with some standards downstream. They will then say, this is how the river is behaving. This is how the river can take pollutants. This is how it can process those pollutants and build in a safety factor. And then give us a standard for the discharge to our wastewater treatment works and a charge for those externalities. We then will have to go back up the sewers and send it back to the industries. OK, so that's coming. Mike, any idea when? Because we've been talking about this for many years, but it seems to be coming closer and closer. There's a catchment management agency just been started, a fledgling one, 1st of April, and they need some money. So, I'm not too sure. OK. So that's an additional tariff, which is coming. So it's getting worse and worse. Sorry, this one was out of place. This is where we have very strong effluents going through to the sea outfall. We're trying to discourage this. But this is where, particularly with sugary effluents, um, which aren't particularly toxic, but they corrode our sewers quite easily, and they can overload our works, we push this straight to the sea outfall. And that currently is at 50 rand per kiloliter. But again, we're getting pressure from the green lobbyists um, to stop these tankers coming through, not so much because of the aquatic and marine environment, because they've got all these tankers passing their windows all the time, and I don't blame them. So the, there is a tariff for that per kiloliter coming via tanker, and taking it via truck is a very expensive way to do it in the first place. And shortly, well, actually it started on 1st of July, um, they're going to be looking at the strength of that effluent as well, so there's additional charges coming in there. It actually came in 1st of July. Is that right, Lunga? Yeah. Here's some other charges as well. We're going to be targeting fats for industries and also the commercial side as well. Um, we're having difficulty getting it through council, but if you look at Dublin in Ireland, 65% of their sewer blockages comes from fats, oil, and grease. So they actually have 17 people, PhDs and MSCs, looking at fat. Um, they train the people up how to manage the fat and then take, collect the fat and use it, centrifuge it, produce biodiesel and put the fat in, the, in digesters in leads, in fact, to produce more methane gas. And this is the sort of thing that we're putting up with at the moment. That comes from the kitchen through or through the industry, floats on the process and then out through to the watercourse. So that's the sort of thing we've got to stop. 
our processes aren't designed to take out that amount of fat. And it's got to be the users to sort that problem out. Another issue we have, more tariffs. This is all the bad news, hey? This is um, oxygen profile and the flow and the turbidity of a river in, in Etiquene. And my time's up, I'll be very quick now. This is showing you, this is a continuous reading meter looking at the dissolved oxygen. So you can see during the day the dissolved oxygen goes up and then it comes down, up and down, up and down. It's also dominated by a sewage work. So you can see these diurnal flows as well coming from the sewage works. It's also at that time, the sewage works wasn't performing very well. The dissolved oxygen should be about six or seven up here. Okay, so it was an impacted river to start off with. Then we have first, then we have rainfall after a long dry period. Look what ha happens to the oxygen, jam, like that. Now that's because of surface runoff, and it's also because of stormwater infiltration into our sewers, bringing sand and grit in there, and blocking our sewers, and also overflowing them. So we've got a team of guys who are coming out, and we're trying to get this through council. They blow smoke up your sewer, and if it comes out of your stormwater drain, we know that you're putting stormwater into our sewers and overloading it. So we're fighting for a tariff to say that if we find that situation there, we shall look at the entire surface area of your property um, and look at the entire uh, rainfall for that period, no, no evaporation. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a punitive tariff. And we will charge you for that. So if you've got a small property of about 750 square meters, which is a very modest property, you could be char charged an extra four, three or four thousand rand a year. Okay. But that will, there will be savings to the municipality, there'll be improvements in water quality. And the nice thing about it is that quite often, all that's required is that you take your downpipe from the roof and shake it from your kitchen gully and go like that. And that can solve a lot of problems and stop silting up our sewers. So that's another tariff. Okay, so how do you combat all of this? Well, don't let stormwater go through to your sewers. And secondly, the, the hierarchy, which you're probably tired of hearing by now. But it does work. This company here is saving a fortune. That's uh, reverse osmosis. It's putting it on its final effluent. It's reclaiming the water. It's a textile industry in Hammersdale. Here's another one looking at cleaner production, utilizing salt more carefully. It's also tried nitrogen blanketing with it, uh, using, um, what is it now, sodium metabisulfite and caustic. It's saving a fortune on that. Um, and blanketing, it saves half a million a year on chemicals and reduces the electrical conductivity of salts going through to the sewer. And here's another end of pipe treatment. But the further you go with this, the more money you're going to save. The Scottish Environmental Protection Agency in Europe says 4% of turnover can be saved, half of which requires zero capex. Chris Buckley from the Pollution Research Group in UKZN says it's 10%, of which 5% is with no capex. So it's management. What it requires is just a change in attitude like that. That's all. It's costing us money. It's going to cost us more money at the moment. You can save money. You can save a fortune. And those small and medium enterprise companies that say they can't afford the capex, they can't do this. We were in court with one of these small, relatively small companies, employed about 100 people, I think. There were six prosecution cases against this one company. And I went across to him and I said, look, I don't care whether you win or I win. If I, if I win, good luck to you. I have no hard feelings. It's not personal. We're just trying to do our job. If I win, well, it's not going to break your company, but you're going to have to pay a few fines and it will be a conviction. But the problem is, is that you're still going to have the problem when we walk out of here. So he saw the sense and we went to, he, he uh, decided to plead guilty to everything, paid the fines, and we went out and we had a look at his his, uh, his uh, factory. And we actually found that he got once through cooling processes. He was throwing away a Mercedes-Benz A-Class every year, and he was contesting 30,000 rands worth of fines. So again, it's just a matter of changing that attitude like this. 
Okay, through cleaner production, this is the sort of thing we can do. This is one industry that was saving four million a year. It took us three years to convince this industry. We had to do the sensitivity analysis for them. Uh, put it on the financial director's desk. Within six weeks, they had a pilot plant on site. And they were doing very well. But this tells you something. Cleaner production is not an event. It's a process. It's a journey. You never stop doing it. You've got to continuously improve. There was a change in management around here. Different attitudes again. Vump. The loading went up. Their tariffs went up. And in fact, we're going to be putting them on a penalty tariffs shortly. If you have a look at the head of the works, it has a major impact. This is the Hammersdale works. You can see that over the years, we've managed to get a 30% reduction. Change in management, up it goes again. However, it has enabled us to bring in other industrial development in the Hammersdale area by, by getting this company to go for waste minimization. It's improved the water quality downstream. The water is more usable for recreation. It's more usable for the environment itself. And yet people have sa saved money at the same time. Another hidden cost, sorry, you must stop me because I tend to go on. Another hidden cost is the press and what they can do to your company. Uh, we've had situations, I can mention one or two of them, Carnival Foods, de facto they were, they've paid lots of fines, so I'm immune to prosecution here. Normally we keep quiet while it's subjudicate. 14 fines against them. It gets into the newspapers, I don't know how, but it got there. They close shop because Woolworths heard about this and they have an ISO system in place. They're very environmentally conscious. They packed up and went to Joburg. Good luck to them. Joburg's a mess anyway. If you have a look here, the press, they will fabricate things. We've sued carte blanche. They sensationalize everything. We sued carte blanche successfully for a three quarters of an hour program a number of years ago. And they get, eventually they give us a, a 30 second apology at the an end of a program six months later when everybody's sort of forgotten about it. So be very, very careful when, if they get a scent of anything. This is ETV. They didn't publish this because I took a photograph of them. Have a look at this. There they are. This, this system was all cleared up about a week or two before this happened, and now they're down there saying, what a calamity is happening, the authorities are doing nothing about it. So just be careful of that. The press, if they get hold of you, you're in trouble. Certainly when they get hold of us, we're in trouble. Thank you very much for your time. Sorry I went over time.